that's really what I have to say. I'd be more than willing to take questions. Uh, yes, sir. Um, you're talking about how it can be closed and everything. It never really, you can't really compare the plant because Bob Rucker never really had a chance to have his plan taken care of because he was elected, voted out. And this, and this new governor, the Democrats changed the plan. So, folks, that's what the Democrats are going to do for you. They're going to change all the plans that were promised by the former governor. Well, I, let me just respond to that for a second. Uh, and I, if any of the delegates or senators just step in, you know, if there's something you want to say. Hickey was never closed. That's all I can tell you. Yeah, he never had, Bob Rock never had a chance because he was, was because oh, partner of the partner of the changed all the promises and all the plans. Well, there was no, sir, there was no facilities to send those kids to. Those kids never left. Bob Rock would have four more years to try to play. He had four more years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, where do I begin? Whatever you like. <laughs> My name is Al Koch. I'm a neighbor here for 23 years. I live right on Old Hartford Road. Mm -hmm. We've had promises uh, from our senators here, and we thought we were going to have a community park out here. All the time that you've got, you call them juvenile kids. They're not kids uh, out there. That's right. They're they're senior criminals. And I understood from the press that we had what 60, 70 child molesters out there, something of that nature. We as neighbors never knew who you were housing there. Mm -hmm. If you want to go back to the 50s and 60s. They used to be not too bad kids. I went out there in the summertime most every Saturday, brought a few of them to my home, did some gardening, fed them nice. They were nice to deal with and took them back. It was a nice thing to do. You wouldn't think of doing that now. And your promises, I'm sorry, sir, but your promises don't mean anything in light of how people act they're going to promise you the moon and do what you want to do. Another thing, you've got to build, what, a 48-bit facility, mm -hmm. and you're going to spend $35 million, and you already own the land? That's asinine. <laughs> That's asinine. What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Can't you promise us you'll control what goes there? Okay, convicted felons, juvenile <clears throat> offenders for manslaughter, murder, uh, rape, things of that nature. Start there. Turn it back to the training school it was. Yeah. Show us where you're going to put anything. Show us how the state's going to buy the land. <clears throat> What's happening? If they haven't even attempted to get land to build new facilities, it's never going to happen. It's another promise, another story to get right. by the subject. Maryland is not famous for doing anything good about detention, period, from mm -hmm. juvenile through adulthood. So before you sit down, let me just, okay. let's try to do something constructive here, okay? okay. So, so you're saying that, first of all, what you would like to see is some discussion about the use of the land, correct? <clears throat> correct. Okay, and I'm saying we're willing to do that. We're willing to engage in that. What else would you like to see? I don't believe you'll close it down. I see your hand, sir. I see it. I don't believe you'll close it. Well, i got to take one. You know, so if you time. can get control or help us get control of what goes there, so when uh -huh. you're abscond, which is escape when you're talking about a convicted uh -huh. felon, gets out on our streets, we're not at risk. Okay. All right. And in your five-year plan, just tell us where these other people are going to go because the need is extreme. Okay. Baltimore City's got 12-year-olds shooting people down there. Mm -hmm. And the problems are not going to go away until they correct that. Mm -hmm. And they flow out into the closest counties. The whole Baltimore metropolitan area suffers from a lack of detention facilities. Mm -hmm. That's so, exactly right. So let me address your second okay. thing before you sit down, okay? That's one of the reasons why we are advancing the regionalized plan, is because we do not want to hold Baltimore City youth up here on the grounds of Hickey, which is the current case. Mm -hmm. And under the regionalized plan, we would be willing to make commitments to serve kid, kids from the suburban areas. So on the youth, land use and on the commitment in terms of utilization and the types of kids and where they're from, we're willing to work with you on that. So what's, your, what's the third thing that you would like to see? Wasn't there a third one? Or is that the two no, primary the, ones? The, you have a five-year plan, all right, about detention facilities, period. Right. It goes beyond just Hickey. Right. 
where? That's always been the issue okay. in Maryland politics. Nobody so, wants it in their neighborhood. So let me answer that if I can, and then I'll... Go ahead. Okay. Because I think it's good to try to stay with one person and try to answer questions. We have a 144-bed uh, detention center in Baltimore City, which is a reasonably new facility built within the last 10 years. So we, have, we do have that facility there. We also are putting another 48-bed facility in Baltimore City. So we'll have almost two... 200 beds in Baltimore City to be able to address those needs. For the kids from Southern Maryland, some of whom occasionally come up here, you know, we will have a 48 bed facility on the grounds of Cheltenham and a 48 bed treatment center there as well too. So we are providing for not just the needs here, where you know we're spreading this out, the needs for all of Maryland. My name is Carl Adams. I live up here on uh, Power Lane. My property backs right up against Hickey. Been there for 50 some years. Can we just have one person speaking at a time? I would really appreciate it. We'll be in and out of here in an hour. It won't take a long time, but can we keep one, one person. Been there for 50 some years. Have had no problem with Hickey being there at all. My neighbors that live there that are back right up against Hickey's. Nobody's had any problem with that. I don't know where everybody's getting the idea that we're having a lot of problem with those kids over there. As a matter of fact, I've been over there in the fields when they had horses over there before uh, Early took them out of there. And uh, uh, the, they had kids over there learning things. And like I said, it's, that place has been there for 90 some years. Show me somebody who's any, really ever had any problems with any of those kids. That come to your house? Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. Well, I got a man that lives right in Munster Road because in here just a while ago it says he never had any problem with it at all. When they get out, they're not sticking right there. Wait, 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 wait. That's not the way I want to conduct this meeting. That's not the way I'm going to conduct this meeting. We need a place for you these You just came kids. here to convince us to do what you want to do. I came here to listen to you, but one yeah, at a time. I don't believe one, it. one at a time. One at a time. We need a place for these kids. They are kids. They're, they're they are children. They are children. Yeah. They are children. They we need a place for them. Because they want to go this in the other direction. This place has been there 90 yeah. some years. Don't feed the camera. <laughs> now you got to start thinking about you know our future children. Uh, and if you don't take care okay, of them and have you. a place to take them to, and that place has been there, never had any really, pro no problems with it. And I can't, I can't believe anybody's had any physical problems with it. Let me, let me just, and this lady's been waiting a long time, she's going to go next. But let me just for, for point of clarification, uh, it's been suggested to me that I try to do this. <clears throat> when those ten kids absconded from Hickey, I interviewed them afterwards because they were taken to the Justice Center. And I interviewed one of the boys that was really the ringleader in the group because I, I had only been here a short period of my, myself and I wanted to really understand, you know, what contributed to these kids wanting to run away. Were they being mistreated? Was there something going on or whatever? And the boy that I interviewed had been there for a year waiting to go to a placement. Under the new plan that we're advancing, the average term would be less than 30 days for a kid to process through this. <laughs> You can imagine, many of you have children of your own. You know the kids, especially when they're 14, 15 years of an age. One week is a really long time to wait for something to happen. A year is unconscionable. We've reduced that time in the year that I've been here and working with my deputies. I have a lot of my deputies here, Deputy Dixon over here, Francis Mendez, one of my other deputies. We've moved that down to about 44 days from what it was at that time to move kids through more quickly. So the kids that would be in this facility would be there for very short term. We're in a community where we can involve with those kids because they have to be in my backyard when those mm -hmm. kids disappeared. And I was telling the lady from the TV, I felt sorry for the kids because sure. they were young kids. Yeah. And I was talking to one of the state troopers. He said, what are you crazy? He said, these, these kids are not kids. So, some, of, some of them are not, that's true. Our average age there is between 15 and 16 years of age. Um, if a youth, as you know, in this state uh, commits a serious felony, they're going to go into the adult system. Yeah. Many of them do, unfortunately, and then they really get lost, but that's the way the law is.